We want to describe motion of the human body, we need to identify the space on which that motion occurs. To do this, we divide the body into three different sections or planes, sagittal, transverse, and frontal. Today, Molly is going to be demonstrating these motions and how they occur on each one of the planes. The sagittal plane is a vertical plane cutting the body into left and right halves. So any forward and backward movement parallel to this plane occurs in the sagittal plane. Movement such as flexion and extension will occur in the sagittal plane. As you can see with this lunge movement that Molly is demonstrating, her body is moving front to back, flexing and extending at the hip and knee joint, therefore occurring in the sagittal plane. Also, an exercise such as a bicep curl would occur in the sagittal plane. The flexion movement at the elbow joint is running parallel to that invisible plane, again dividing the body into left and right halves. The frontal plane is a vertical plane that passes through the body, dividing it into anterior and posterior halves. Any lateral or side movement, moving towards or away from the midline, will be on the frontal plane. So movements such as adduction and abduction, or elevation and depression of the scapula, will occur on the frontal plane. For example, Molly is performing a jumping jack which occurs on the frontal plane since the movement of ab and adduction of the arms and legs is occurring parallel to that plane, moving towards and away from the midline. Additionally, Molly is also performing a lateral torso flexion. That would occur on the frontal plane since the movement of her torso is occurring parallel to that plane, again which is dividing the body into anterior and posterior halves. Lastly is the transverse plane. This is a horizontal plane that divides the body or parts of the body into top and bottom halves. Anytime we rotate a joint, it occurs in the transverse plane. So movements such as rotation, pronation, and supination all occur in the transverse plane. For example, you can see that Molly is demonstrating an external and internal rotation of the humerus. Since this rotation at the shoulder joint is pivoting, it indicates it's on the transverse plane. A movement also like this torso rotation that Molly is demonstrating, the movement is running parallel to that invisible plane which is cutting the body in half. Keep in mind that while it's helpful to define the three principal planes, many human movements do not occur in a single plane and usually cross two or more. As Molly is demonstrating a lunge with an upper body rotation, you can see it occurs in both the sagittal and transverse plane. To get a better idea of how the planes of motion work, try applying it to your everyday life. As you make movements in your daily life, try and think about what plane of motion that occurs in.